When God was a child, God played marbles. With a great crack, the marbles scattered across the universe, and God chased them and found them and put them into God's pocket. One eon, as God chased marbles, two marbles rolled under the Milky Way. God searched and searched, but could not see them hidden among the gas and dust reflected by the stars. And then it was time for arts and crafts, today was modeling with clay, and God changed course. Before God left, though, God gave a great sigh of longing for God's missing marbles. The sigh of longing traveled along the Milky Way, and when it reached the two marbles hidden away there, the marbles hiccuped into life. Chrysocolla, the big blue marble with green flecks, stretched and expanded and inhaled and exhaled and soon began to slowly dance in a circle, admiring himself and his surroundings. Quartz, the tiny clear marble, shivered. She could not get warm, surrounded by the cold vastness of space. The big blue marble with green flecks saw his dear companion shivering and did his slow, circular dance until he, until he was right up against her. He said, If you want to snuggle in close, I will try to keep you warm. And the tiny clear marble said, Oh, yes, please, and thank you. And as Quartz got closer and closer, the blues and greens of Chrysocolla were reflected and mirrored on her surface. They touched, and both marbles felt a surge within them, something that was wondrous and cozy. Oh, Chrysocolla, said Quartz, you are so beautiful. I love being with you. Oh, Quartz, said Chrysocolla, you are so magnificent, and you mirror my beauty so lovingly. I love being with you. So Quartz and Chrysocolla snuggled closer and closer until Quartz was fully encompassed by Chrysocolla. She settled in and enjoyed the feeling of Chrysocolla protecting and nourishing her, and in turn, Cry Quartz amplified the blues and greens. From her home in the center of Chrysocolla, she sang a song of creation, and the song reverberated throughout the big blue planet with green flecks, for that is what together they had become, and the vibrations resonated life. They were all the world. Eons passed. An eon is a long time. A lot happened. Chrysocolla forgot about quartz. Not all at once. It was a gradual thing. On the surface of Chrysocolla, there was a lot going on. There was so much life that it sometimes seemed like too much. Life left scars all across his exterior. There was a lot of noise and a lot of movement, and it was all very distracting. And in the chaos of time and space and humanity, Chrysocolla forgot that deep within his core, there was a tiny clear presence who loved him and mirrored his beauty. Quartz did not forget about Chrysocolla. Cozy in his core, she continued to sing her song, she loved to sing. She loved being cozy. She loved Chrysocolla. She felt him forget her. She felt him grow a little colder and then a little more. She felt him and he felt heavier, darker. He felt sad. Oh, Chrysocolla, Quart sang, you are so beautiful, I love being with you. Quartz changed her song from one of creation to one of remembrance. And as she sang, little crystals formed on her, and she guided them up through the core to Chrysocolla's surface. 
Remember, remember, she sang. I love you, I love you, she sang. The crystals emerged in caves and coves and forests. They sought out and amplified the bits of blue and green. The crystals vibrated with Quartz's song of loving remembrance. It was an attractive song. And by and by the trees and flowers and plants who were rooted in the earth of Chrysocolla began to sing along. And then the crustaceans and fishes and sponges and mollusks and echinoderms, the worms and insects and arachnids and reptiles and amphibians all joined in. And then the birds and the animals. Together they sang and Chrysocolla noticed There is something I have forgotten, he thought, but I don't know what. The air and water and earth and fires of Chrysocolla pulsed with the song of loving remembrance. Remember, remember, I love you, I love you. One day, Amy was walking in her garden, and she saw something shiny out of the corner of her eye. She reached down and picked up what appeared to be a translucent rock with a point growing out of it. She held it, and it felt very good. She felt something inside of her attuning to that feeling of goodness. She began to remember. She put the crystal in her pocket, where it sang to her. Later, she found another translucent rock, and she gave it to her good friend Bob. He began to remember. He put the crystal in his pocket where it sang to him. By and by, the crystals were discovered and put in pockets and on windowsills and in grottos. They sang their song, and the humans remembered how beloved Chrysocolla was. The humans began to pay attention to Chrysocolla, They saw the scars on Chrysocolla's surface and placed the singing crystals into the wounded grooves. They sang along, Remember, remember, I love you, I love you. And Chrysocolla remembered. Not all at once. It was a gradual thing. There was still a lot going on. As Chrysocolla remembered, the singing crystals in his scars vibrated little fissures down through the core of his being. And Quartz rejoiced, for she could feel her beloved remembering her. Oh, Quartz, Chrysocolla exulted down through the fissures. You are so magnificent, and you mirror my beauty so lovingly. I love you, I love you. And Quartz melted a little, so warm and cozy, in Chrysocolla's loving embrace. Back up through the fissures, Quartz expanded, and there was a surge as Quartz and Chrysocolla reunited something that was wondrous and cozy. She filled up the scars, which became rivers of Quartz running along all of Chrysocolla's surface. She infused, and he synthesized, and she melded, and they commingled until they were completely unified. There was no quartz. There was no chrysocolla. There was earth. And it was good.